author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and I'm here at the University Bookstore in Bellevue, Washington, with Lucy Christopher, author of The Killing Woods. Lucy, welcome to Author. Thank you for having me. Lucy, can you think back to the first time you recognized that story mattered to you? The first thing that popped into my head was when I moved to Australia when I was nine years old, and I really didn't fit in with Australia at all. I, yeah. was, I moved from the UK, and I was little with a Welsh accent back then, not now, and um, I just didn't fit in at all. And it, we moved to this very hot place, and in my school lunch breaks, the only place that we were allowed to go where there was air conditioning was the school library. So I used to take myself off to the school library and rather than sit there like a sort of no friends person, <laughs> I started to read and I just raced through so many books and it was absolutely the first time that I ever thought, right, reading is actually kind of fun and brilliant and I'm, I'm sure that it helped me to fit in with Australia as well because I read all of the books that were Australian books and that the kids are reading at the, around me. So. It helped me on many levels. You know, you said, um, instead of being the no friend person, <laughs> when I was t talking to some young people about writing and reading, I thought that when you find a book you love, it has always felt like making a friend. Yeah. I've always equated it to that. Did you, f because you're like, you're connecting to some other person in a way or some other kind of intelligence the way you would with a person. Absolutely. Did you feel that way? Yeah, that's such a nice way of putting it as well. And, um, I was just, the, immediately when you said that, I thought of sometimes when you go to events for young people and you see the, the teens getting their book signed and then they, they're hugging it, they hug it afterwards as yeah. they leave. And it's, oh, it's lovely, but absolutely, I had no f real friends to begin with when I moved to Australia, but I had a lot of books that I connected with and loved. And I, I don't remember actually being lonely. I just remember it took me a while to move just from book friends to real Actual friends as friends. well. But reading is a great, it's a great start for writers mm -hmm. and just for people in general because write, reading a book, I think it's creative, isn't it? Reading is imaginative. Absolutely. Because you read, and as a writer you know this, yeah. you rely on the reader's imagination yeah. to really bring it to life. Absolutely, the writer only does sort of three quarters of the circle and the, the reader fills in the rest of the circle to create the whole story. So it's a, a combined effort to make that story happen. It's not, not only the writer that's being the creative one. Because, and you know, so you teach writing and you know, the, and rule number one is show, don't tell, we say, right? Yep. But it's, in a way, I always thought that the reader finishes your story. Absolutely. Right, you want, at the end, you want to point them to the end, but not say, and therefore we know that this means, yeah. right? Isn't that what we're doing with showing and not telling? Absolutely, and especially I think that's really relevant for young adult fiction, because it would be so easy to say, right, this is how you need to think right. at the end of this story. You're younger than me and you need to be taught this, blah, 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 but far more skillful and respectful to just leave it as something that's shown to, an author, uh, to a readership and they can fill in the meaning for themselves, I think. You know, young adult, you're an adult, <laughs> You're young, but you're not a young adult <laughs> in the uh, book buying world. And so why do you write for young adults? Why is that your, other than that it's a good market right now? It is a good market right now, but that's not, any, not the reason why I write for young adults. I write for young adults, uh, I think for two reasons. I think the first reason is because I, I really strongly believe that there's a time in a person and a writer's life that you can really remember very vividly and connect with and feel the emotions and the issues. And that for me was about 14, 15, 16. I can really vividly still remember how it felt. How it felt to be that old. How it felt to be on the beginning of adulthood and everything yeah. expanding. Um, and I also write because I actually love the audience. I think teen readers are fantastic. They are. They're really cool. They are devoted. They are. They're passionate, but they're, all, they're also, they will tell you if they don't like something Oh, yes. As well. <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> they're very truthful. Yeah. <laughs> which I like. All right. So, but at some point, um, you decided to become a writer. Yeah. This is what you wanted to do, which is never, I don't think, 
even if you love it, it's not always an easy decision because mm -hmm. it can seem perilous and you did a lot of other things as well. I did. Uh, talk about that decision. I guess it really happened when you went to MF, when you went in for your MFA. Yes, that's true. I was before that I was living in Australia. I did my undergraduate degree in Australia and I was sort of dabbling around with lots of different things. I was dabbling about with being an actor for a while, dabbling uh -huh. about with being a nature guide and just all sorts of random things. Worked in the race racing yard as well. <laughs> I, I, I like experiences, so sure. I tried everything. Um, and I really wanted to be an actor and it, it was a tough, tough gig. And I thought, well, I want to be something creative. What can I do? What can I? What could I do at school? And it was always English, 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 English the whole way. I was, that was always my best subject. And I thought, well, I'll try it. I'll spend a year doing doing an MA in the UK. That was why I moved to the UK, and just see, just see if I can write a book. Because I always knew I wanted to write a book, but I didn't know if I wanted to write it then. I thought it would be something I'd do old when I was much older. <laughs> And it was just it was just really fortuitous. I wrote a book which then my publishers um, showed some interest in and it went on from there. So do certain themes come up for you? I mean, so I, I just interviewed Amy Tan, for instance, recently, yeah. and she said every book I write is about identity and mothers and daughters. I don't care what the book is about. That's what I'm only ever writing about. Do you yeah. find something similar things keep coming up for you and coming up for you? That's so interesting that Amy Tan said that I would agree with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, I would say I absolutely am concerned with um, portrayal of nature and wild place and how, how we relate to a wild environment and how a wild environment changes us and changes characters. I think that's certainly come up very strongly in the three books I've published and is again a strong theme in the book I'm writing now. Because you were a nature guy. Yeah. <laughs> so you saw that already that was coming up in your life. Absolutely. And is it, because to me when I think of nature, I think of its sort of spiritual grounding. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's life without judgment. Yep. Right? Because the tree doesn't judge. Yep. And is that part of what, and it doesn't care whether you die or live either. Yep. Does, is that part of your connection to it? What is your connection to it? Again, good question. I find, I find oh, it's really difficult to describe, but there's, there's some sort of magic in nature. And I, found, I saw it when I was teaching kids as a field guide when I was a nature guide, yeah. you would sometimes speak to these kids in their classroom, they'd be pretty much climbing up the walls with <laughs> <laughs> misbehavior yeah. and you'd get them into the nature reserve and you'd sit them down, you'd show them something really simple like a robin or a duck or a swan and something would happen, they would calm down, they would look, they would listen, the senses would start reacting yeah. and it's something just so basic and primal that we've all got inside us that I think we forget about often in, in our busy, crazy, often materialistic sure. world. Sure, well here we are, there's forget. no nature around us exactly. right now. <laughs> but you know it's interesting, so here's the challenge for the writer, is that that experience of nature is so experiential. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're there and you understand it. Yeah. And so then there comes the interesting challenge of how do I translate that into the written word yeah. so that they can feel what I feel. Yeah. Is, how, do you feel how have you done with that in your, in your opinion? I think research is essential. Research? Yep. Um, Isn't just walking out into the woods all you need or no? No, not just, but okay. I do think that is essential. I think all if right. you're going to write place-based fiction, you really have to go to that place and spend okay. a good amount of time there as well. Um, Stolen, my first book is set in the Australian outback. I grew up around areas that that book is set in. And also I took a three and a half week trip through the desert just to research that book. Uh. Killing Woods is set in woods around my house where I live that I walk through every day and know yeah. really well. And it's just about getting that feeling of the place into your bones so it goes yeah. into the paper. So you teach creative writing. Yeah. Um, I like, I teach writing too, sorta. Fantastic. Um, uh, not in a college setting, but I teach it in seminars and stuff. I love it. I feel like I learn every time I teach. Yeah. It's nice to teach what I need to learn. Yeah. How how is how about yourself? Do you do, do do you learn from the process? Yeah. It's really interesting that you said that you teach what you need to learn. I do. I found that too. <laughs> <laughs> and often when I'm in a workshop environment and I'm picking up on something in, in one of my students' work, I think afterwards that's exactly what I need to be thinking about voice yeah. or present tense or whatever they whatever I'm finding there. Yeah. Absolutely. I also find it's good to just connect with other writers and the writing process because I took uh, a semester off my teaching role to write The Killing Woods and it didn't help the writing actually. 
just being by myself oh, in no. the room. No, it didn't help. You need the interaction. I needed the interaction. I needed to have that writing world or whatever it was. And so what did you learn, if you can quantify this, but what did you learn writing uh, The Killing Woods that you think you might take to your next book? How would, did you grow writing that book? What's I different? grew a lot writing this book, more than my other books. It's your fourth book, even though it's your third published, but it's your fourth book. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was the hardest book to write. It took me over three years to write it. Why was it so hard? It was difficult because, for, actually because of setting. This is why it became so difficult. Oh. The book was originally, I wanted to write a book set in the rainforest in Africa um, because I've always just been okay. really intrigued by deep, dark Congolese yeah. rainforest. <laughs> uh, obviously I read Heart of Darkness when I was a young ah, person and loved yeah. it. Um, and I went to I went to Nigerian rainforest to research um, wow. and I went to this very, very remote uh, primate center um, for about two weeks and did a lot of research and a lot of um, recording. Then I came back to the UK and it just didn't work, I couldn't make it work and it really worried me like why why can't why can't I write this book? I had the plot, I had the characters but I realized it's because I didn't know I didn't know the rainforest really, I didn't know it like I knew really? the desert. Wow. Yeah. I, mean, I, have, that is, I have asked this kind of question a lot and that is the <laughs> first time I've heard that it was a familiar with the setting that yeah. would prevent, wow. Absolutely, and I started. So did you have to go back? Is that what? Well, I was sort of toying with that. I didn't have much money at that point. <laughs> <laughs> my, my deadline had probably been and gone by yeah, that point. Sure. <laughs> sure. And I started to walk around the woods. That's when I started to walk around the woods behind my house, trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this story, like how I'm going to make yeah. it work. And I started to think, well, I obviously want to write about the woods. And I started to think, well, maybe, maybe I could write about these woods and maybe the story could be set here and it wouldn't necessarily work exactly how it was originally. So I started to think, well, what could happen in these woods? What would be a terrible thing and what would be a really good thing? And the story really very much came from the woods. And in fact, the woods near my house has an abandoned World War II bunker in the woods and there's an abandoned bunker in this wood. It's a great metaphor. What you needed was always right in your backyard. Exactly. Literally. Yeah. Yeah, it was a real right what you know moment. Yeah. <laughs> So I've got one more question okay. for you, and what I'd like you to do is finish the sentence for me. <laughs> okay. If writing has taught me anything, it's taught me what? If writing has taught me anything, it has taught me to be patient. Oh, patience, yeah. <laughs> and how did it teach, did patient with the word or just with the whole project, the whole I'm process? I'm going to expand on it and it's good. it taught me to be patient and it also taught me to be brave. And I think they sort of go hand in hand because it, I've had to be very patient with writing this book because it's taken me a long time and I thought many times along the way I'm not going to finish this book. Yep. But it's also more importantly taught me to be brave and just hang on to the fact that no hang on there's something here and it deserves to be written and you just hold on to that and keep going. So those two things.